See the massive day my run come To hear the band the play Oh yes, oh yes, oh yeah This is Dennis Walks from the Drifters Bigging up Father Arno and Jackie Edgetown and DJ Nat a problematic tune in once a month to the dub and dub show online. Straight facts, no bullshit. Then swap to that. Dub and dub show is on again with DJ Nash. It's on again. Dub and dub show is on again with Father Arno. It's on again. We've got that smile because we know we're winning. From the selection that we are spinning. Greetings, this is Hope and Linda reminding you to truly keep it loud. I want to wake up with you. I want to be there when you open your eyes I want you to be the first thing that I see I want to wake up with you I want to lay by your side, baby I want to feel every beat of your heart and throughout the night, I want to hold you tight. I want to wake up with you. Hi, I'm Boris Gardner. Tonight, I'm representing the champion sound, Jack Cage, with Father Arno. So, sound boy, you better pack up for the night, for it's Jack Cage time to rock the building. Yeah, man, BG alongside Jack Cage. When this stuff play, drum fan sound good, you're rich. I wanna give sounds with Jack H. I wanna kill sounds with the king. Cause you are the best, don't anyone try to test. I wanna kill sounds with Jack H. I wanna kill sounds with Jack Cage. I wanna be there when you're killing a sound. Cause you are the best, no dibby dibby sound can test. I wanna kill sounds with Jack Cage. All the drum and sound boys have been waiting. For the champion sound to start playing Jack H sound Kill them sound boy with double Let them know who's the champion I wanna kill sounds with Jack H I wanna kill sounds with the king Cause you are the best, don't anyone try to test. I wanna kill sounds with Jack Cage. Benji, is you that? What is going to be coming in at the door? You know it's 430. What is that on your shirt? Lipstick? Yeah, Lord. Oh, my commanding wife. She wants to destroy my life. Oh my commanding wife, she wants to destroy my life. Go, go, ah, ah. Go, go, ah, ah. Go, go, ah, ah. Go, go, ah, ah. Oh my commanding wife, she wants to destroy my life. Oh my commanding wife. She wants to destroy my life. Oh, oh, ah, ah. Oh, oh, ah, ah. 
Hi, this is Morris Gardner. Make a problematic sort of Trinidad and Tobago. Heal up DJ Nash, Raj, Scorpion, and Piper. Some boy, hear this. Problematic sound. Tonight we're going to destroy your life. Problematic sound. Tonight we're going to destroy your life. Some boy, oh, 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 ha, ha. you're gonna take your life. Oh, ha, ha. Some boy, oh, 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 ha, ha. you're gonna take your life. Oh, ha, ha. Oh, problematic sound, give them someone a musical spanking. Oh, problematic sound, give them some boy a musical beating. Oh, oh, uh-huh. they're gonna spank you. Oh, oh, uh-huh. they're gonna whip you. Oh, oh, uh-huh. just before they kill you. Oh, oh, uh-huh. some boy are a big baboon, a worthless pop. He is a good for nothing. Dumb, dumb, you dirty, no good of the teething right. Stupid fool, big idiot. Some boy, oh, oh, uh-huh. you're gonna take your life. Oh, uh-huh. Some boy, oh, oh, uh-huh. you're gonna take your life. Oh, uh-huh. Some boy, problematic sound. Tonight we're going to destroy your life. Some boy, problematic sound. Tonight Tonight we're going to destroy your life, some boy. Oh, oh, uh-huh. They're gonna take your life, oh, uh-huh. some boy. Oh, oh, uh-huh. They're gonna take your life, oh, uh-huh. some boy. Some boy. Wicked. So, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 14th episode of Dubs Fun Dubs. My name is Father Arno, representing Jacquet Sound, and as always, I'm here with my partner in crime, DJ Nash from the Mighty Problematic Sound. Say what, my brother? Nash, I don't hear you. You've muted yourself. Hey, sorry, Arno. Sorry, sorry. Great to be here, DJ Nash from Problematic Sound. Want to welcome all to episode 14 with a very special guest and a great musical friend of mine. For real, for real. You said it already. For this episode of Dubs Pond Dubs, we again have a very special guest. And when we say special, we mean special. So all the way from Kingston, Jamaica, we proudly present one of the most prominent singers, songwriters, bass players, and musical arrangers. Right. Welcome, no other than Mr. Boris Gardner. Here Dubs, Dubs. Mr. Gardner, welcome to our show. Great pleasure <laughs> having you. Thank you. It's nice to be here. <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks for, for your time on and being a, a, a guest on our show tonight. It's been a long wait. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trust me and you. <laughs> yeah, but, but good to see you. Really good to see you. Thank you for taking the time uh, and for being our guest tonight. Really, it's nice to be here with you. Appreciate it. I've been waiting a a couple of weeks. We were looking forward for this as well. It was a special episode, a whole heap of things to talk about. Um, Tonight we're here to talk about your history, the history of Jamaican music, and of course, a lot, a lot, a lot of more things. Um, But before we start with the actual interview, Mr. Gardner, please introduce yourself to our viewers. Well, my name is Boris Gardner. I've been singing from 1960. And um, I started singing with the the Rhythm Aces. And uh, we made a couple of hit records at the beginning. One was called Angela. The second one was called a thousand teardrops. I was really inspired by a, a Trinidadian <laughs> young girl who came. To, <laughs> before we go into the time. details, before we go into the details of all of that, Mr. Gardner, please all right. let's take it back for our viewers where it all began. We heard that you started to sing at a very young age, at your uncle's party, actually, like, like when you were three years old. Um, oh, that's... Can, you, can, you, can you take us back into this time and, oh. 
and take it back where where the where the journey started for you. Well, you know, when I, I, I used to sing as a kid in school, and really before that, everybody realized that I had a lovely voice. But I, I really got it from my mother. She was a, a beautiful singer. Mm. You heard of Joe Stafford? No. You don't know that name. No. No other love. No, no. no. That was one of her favorite songs. Okay. Right? Wicked. And so with that, I I got the, the, the gift, I guess, from the Craddocks. And so when I was a little boy, my uncle said, I came to him and said, Uncle Martha, can I sing you a song? <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> he was surprised, you know. And I started to sing a little nursery rhyme for him. Don't remember Wicked. which one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but as time went by, you know, I used to sing in school. Every Friday we had a, a concert and those students who could more or less sing mm. would enter and um, perform. And I mean, every time I go on and I sing, everybody cheered on the place. <laughs> so, <laughs> so weird. I, I can't I can sing that way to myself, you know. <laughs> Wicked. You know, and it went on. I really said, so man gone. Mr. <laughs> Gallo, <laughs> where you there? <laughs> oh my! So it seems like it seems like we lose the connection to Mr. Gardner. We're trying to bring him back on screen ASAP. So. Let's just work that out real quick. Yeah, it's probably a little bad weather across there. So we have to work with that tonight. But I'm sure Mr. Gardner will be back online asap as he said it was a long way a little bit tricky today with the sound check a couple of times we lost the connection sick We should play some more Boris Gardner dubs in the meantime. <laughs> so yeah, just uh, just um, send a message to the man. Send a message. Here. So let's see what yeah, happens. Perfect. Yes, yeah, probably internet connection for real. No? There we go, Mr. Gardner's back already. Perfect. Okay. Check, check. Hear us? Am Mr. Gardner, again? you hear us? Yes. Perfect. We okay. got you back. Perfect. Okay. Great, great, great. We lost connection for a second, but now we have you back. It is really great. Yeah. Uh, where was I? Alan <laughs> was in school. I, I was Everybody in school, was right. quiet when you started to sing. Right. And all the little damsels damsels the little girls would scream you know <laughs> in those days we used to sing mostly classics yeah i don't know if you ever heard of um the great caruso maria lanzo no. these guys were italian singers and okay. that's what used to inspire jamaicans all the young boys used to sing classics because you're mine and all those sort of songs right and so those are the songs we sang in the day. As time went by, I um, when I was 16 years old and going to college, I developed a heart condition. 
Mm. Right? At the age of 16, going to into 17. Where my heart, after a football match, it, it started beating at like 100 beats a minute. Mm -hmm. And it would not slow down. Mm -hmm. I went home after the match and being at home, the heart was still going at that speed. A hundred, hundred and odd beats a minute. I spoke to my brother and he said, well, why I made him feel the heart. And so, wow. So, well, it was evening. So I said, go to bed and see how you'll feel in the morning. I slept through the night and the next morning the heart was still up there. In fact, it was going even faster. And I didn't tell my mother. I was just waiting and hoping mm. that it would slow down. After two days in fact, I, I was really living with my father at the time, mm. and I'm maybe a half a mile or so away, my mother was living. So, after all that, it, I can remember one Thursday. This happened like from Sunday to Thursday, and all that, the heart was going. 120, 130 beats. No I'm ease sweating, up. Sweating like hell. My stomach gave me some pain I couldn't stand. And this Thursday morning, I walked down to my mother and I fell on the veranda. With that, the help I was outside and she, she saw me and she said, what, 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 what wrong with you, Boris? I said, Martin, my heart. I should oh, say, what? I should feel the heart and the heart gallop. She ran inside and called my mother. Miss Sissy, Miss Sissy. Morris dropped down <laughs> on the veranda. So my mother ran out and said, check me what happened, what happened, man. And she fell in my heart. She said, oh, my God. No, this can but She and the helper lift me up and take, took me to the, the clinic, which, which was about 500 yards away. You know, so they lift me and walk with me down to the clinic and rush, run in to the doctor and said, doctor, emergency. My son heart is beating at so much, you know, mm -hmm. very rapidly. And she, the doctor came out and said, look. And the doctor said, oh, my God. <laughs> Never felt anything like that in our life. Mm -hmm. She phoned um, Kingston Public Hospital and sent, asked for an emergency, sent a, um, an ambulance. So with that, the ambulance came very quickly and they put me in the ambulance and rushed me off to um, public hospital. Our heart specialist had never felt anything like this in another patient in Jamaica. Mm. They, they were astonished. I could not believe what they were feeling, you know. The heart was up to 140 beats a minute. Dr. Whitelock, I can remember him. <laughs> they took me, admitted me, and started doing some little things to try to slow down the heart and gave me some tablets. And so I was there day after day for three weeks in the hospital. It slowed down 
each day less and less until it would be it would come to normal um 80 90 uh, beats per minute but as i start believe that i am feeling good again and get up out the bed and say what it start tumble down again <laughs> <laughs> No, it started being rapid on me again. <laughs> I couldn't believe what was happening. So I was confined to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't come out of bed, you see. All some nice, lovely nurses and all that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do a thing. So was they, this what they call it tachycardia, right? The tachycardia, right. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a condition. It's a nervous condition because at the beginning, some doctors would say it's a a weak heart. Yeah. But it was no weak heart. Another yeah. one it... said no, it's a nervous heart. Yeah. Which I would believe is a nervous heart for me to be alive today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. Correct. And so. They said, well, after three weeks, the doctor said, they can't do anything for me. I just have to change my lifestyle and take things easy for a while and, you know, don't overdo things and that sort of thing. You know, when you tell a 17-year-old something mm -hmm. like that, it's like the end of life, right? Mm -hmm. Can I go play in a football, cricket, run and that sort of thing? Anyway, I sat there one day at home, you know. My mother was even trying to figure out what I'd be able to do because I couldn't go back to school like this. It was too hectic even to reach a school. A lot of walking and, and you know, so I, I was at home hoping and praying that something would change. So while there, a singer called um, Richard Ace, who had a singing group called the Rhythm Aces, he came to me and said, well, well, I understand that I'm not well and all that. And he had a singing group, but the lead singer that they had was leaving the island. And he wanted to know if I was interested in leading the group. So, well, I said, well, I'll, I'll try anything right now because <laughs> there's nothing, you know, I, I have planned for the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, three of us got together. In fact, one of the guys used to go to my school at the time, and we used to sing at the concerts. Dennis Moss. He was from Africa. There was Richard Ace and myself. And so we said, we need to find one more person. And we searched around and found a youth. He was 17, um, 15 years old. Delano Stewart. Big name. Yeah, he later on started singing with the gay lads. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so we, we started rehearsing some doo-wop music and I started, I think, hit parade songs. We started sounding pretty decent. Everybody liked the songs. The boy, they're so nicey, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> so well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those days and that was in the I 60s then, I, I was 17 years old everybody well Richard was maybe 3 or 4 years older than us mm -hmm. and so we started looking for a little nightclub to go performing you know but there was one close by the penguin 
close to where we used to live. And we said, let's check check with the penguins, see if they would give us a bligh on, mm -hmm. on the shore. And we went over to Penguin. They had a, a band called Trent and Spence Quartet. And so we went over and the guy said, okay, go rehearse with the band and let's see what happens. So we went and we rehearsed a couple of songs on the hit parade at the time. And so the Friday night sh show time, and they introduced the rhythm aces, a place full of people. And we came out and we started to sing a song named Sherry. Sherry. Sherry, I just want to be, to be your lover man, your lover man. I don't know if you guys know that song, but I have to pass on this one. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds wicked, man. I have to be honest. I have to pass on this one. Go on WhatsApp, man. I put in <laughs> Sherry and you hear it. Falsetto and all them sort of thing, you know. So things went on nicely. And everybody loved the sound. Hey, we got a good encore and all that. So it was very encouraging. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Time went went on and we got different um um, nightclubs to, to perform in, you know, guest artists and all that sort of thing. We even performed at the Playboy Hotel in Arakabessa. You know, Playboy was in Jamaica at the time. <laughs> Some lovely little bunnies Jesus hopping, hopping around. <laughs> Of course, those, those bunnies were much older than me now. <laughs> at that time. <laughs> you know, but they were very, very exciting and beautiful. Mm, I can't imagine that for real. <laughs> yeah. And we performed in the, the nightclub there, man, and a lot of tourists. And we got a lovely ovation. You know, and yeah, people like, um, Wilfred, you know, Jackie Edwards? Yeah. Jackie Edwards was with us at that time also. Okay, okay. So we were all on the same show. He was, he was Wilfred Edwards at that time. And then he changed his name to Jackie Edwards when he went to England. Okay. He did this thing, um, Tell me, darling, tell me you love me so. Wicked. Wicked. Squeeze me, honey. Hold me, never let me go. You know that song? Yep. That was a big hit for him at that time. So with the rhythm aces now, we said, well, I think it's time we try to write a song or two. I wrote a song while at school for a little girl. I would say I, I fell in love with. <laughs> it's the same Trinidadian girl now, right? Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. <laughs> this was before. Okay, okay. <laughs> this was before. All right. Her name was Angela. And I sat, you know, I had a piano at home. And, you know, the, the, the bringing of the ding, 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 do up music yeah, yeah. in those days. Angela, 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 Angela. Oh, I love you. Oh, girl, you know I do. It's a bit slow, you know. Mm. Yet you hurt me. Boom, boom, boom. And you made me cry. Do, do. 
if you should leave me, I would surely die. Oh, mm-hmm. Angela. Big Hama. Yeah, it was a nice little tune mm. for an opener. Yeah. So people, it went on the hit parade and went like in the top 20. And everybody got to know the the sound of the, the group, the rhythm aces. One day around summertime, two girls from Trinidad came to spend time next door. Summer, you know. And me and my brother would take a look and, you know, two nice girls. <laughs> and and people ask me routinely now what the man said. <laughs> they would look and smile also, you know. But I wasn't into my brother. There was a young, younger one. She was about maybe, I'd say, 14 or so. And I was 17, but she didn't look anyway 14, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. She looked quite mature for age. And we just look at each other and smile. And we didn't talk. You know? Not one word exchange. Boy, I can't remember saying a word to her at the time. <laughs> you know, maybe hi, and that sort of thing. And, mm. But most of the time, we we'll just look at each other and smile. And so the week went by, and I had to leave. Uh oh, can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you good. We hear you good. I, I'm not seeing anything. We, we hear you right. proper. Don't touch anything, Mr. Gardner. We hear you and see you we proper. See you. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, the day you now they're saying they're leaving and saying goodbye. And we both just look at each other and tears started running down our eyes. <laughs> <laughs> she was yeah, she was crying and I was crying. But I would hold on my head, you know, because I, I kind of feel ashamed. <laughs> anyway, I went in the car and the car drove out and, and left. And I stayed around the back of my home and I started one piece of bawling. <laughs> and I was there sobbing and all that sort of thing, just thinking. And I, I just started singing. A thousand teardrops Each day I shed over you Over you Well, it wasn't all of it at that time, like two lines. Can you hear me? Yes, Proper. yeah, we hear you fine, yeah. Perfect. Right. Like two lines, and I said, Wait, what? Wait, wait, that don't sound bad. I just caught the crying <laughs> <laughs> and wiped my eyes and head goes around uh, the piano. Mm-hmm. And I sat there and I started ding, 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 and started playing some chords. I started singing lines and coming up with another line and that sort of thing. We recorded that song, okay? Mm-hmm. For um, um, Chris Blackwell, Island, Island Records. Island Records, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And it, it was released. And I have it here. I'm going to play it for you. Wicked, wicked. Right? Give me a second. Oh, 
Some but <laughs> why big up all the Trini, the Trini Empress and them for the inspiration. <laughs> that was what I came up with when I was 17. Wicked. <laughs> and Ooh, that Trini song Ooh, spent Ooh. 10 weeks in the top 10 in Jamaica. It reached uh, up to number five or something like that, I heard, right? Say that again. It reached the number five. It, it chart, reached uh, number two. Number two. Okay. okay yeah. Okay. Wicked. So that number two, and then it spent yeah. ten, 10 weeks in the top 10. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah man. I, and so with that, we got pretty popular. Mm. Then after that, we did a song called The Meaning of Christmas. That's a a Christmas carol that we made that Christmas. I can call it a Christmas song. Um, <clears throat> I won't try singing now because <laughs> okay, I get worse. <laughs> C is for Christmas, the season of good cheer. H is for happiness to last you through the year. R is for respect that each and all should show. In this holy season, wherever you may go. Ah, 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 ah. I is for indulgence, to know how far to go. Yes is for Santa Claus, the children all do know. T is for toys, for little girls and boys. Around the world, where'er they be, 
he'll find them joyfully. M is for manger, the place where he was born. A is for angels who watched from dusk till dawn. S is for star that led three men from afar. And remembering these, we hope you'll see a very Merry Christmas wherever you, you may be. Yeah, man. Bop, 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 bop. Bombocklad, what a song. <laughs> what a voice. Sweet, Mr. Garner. Big, big pleasure. We talked about that actually up front uh, with Mr. Gardner, if he would sing a song for our viewers. So wicked, wicked, wicked. Oh, wicked. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> really we got more than we bargained for because we got, he bring out the guitar as well. The guitar, everything. Wicked. And the man voice, I, sweet. <laughs> boy, if, if you wouldn't like to know, you wouldn't really like to know my voice of fear, right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> I am not on the best, you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you like it, that's great. Oh, yeah, mean, man, oh, for real, for real. I wouldn't like say it, it if I wouldn't mean it. Exactly. Sweet. Okay. Um, that song was also a hit for us at, in, in the Christmases. Every Christmas it was a hit coming on through the years. And I re-recorded it about three times. I even have it in reggae. Mm. If you go on um, WhatsApp, YouTube. YouTube, or YouTube, and put in the meaning of Christmas, mm -hmm. Boris Gardner, you'll see the reggae one. Okay, it's, it's pretty nice, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So as time went by, things started getting tough. One moment. Could you give me one second? Sure, <laughs> Some, sure. A, a kid is outside. I have to no let problem. her in. Of no course, problem. Mr. Gardner. Do what you have to do, sir. <laughs> one second. <clears throat> now, now she hear the man's voice. Boy, the man can still hit all them notes, huh? Rush clot, you know. <laughs> man, he's still not in good health right now. Watch that. Jeez. The man say not on his best. Let him sound wicked. Yeah, man. For real. Lots of music to check out on YouTube. Not <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy, oh, holy for history already. Those names. Oh, I really know them. I really know them. You see, I don't see the power of the Trinidadian woman. <laughs> <laughs> Why the man say ball and him a ball and them kind of song come out? It must be the wicked love. I'm telling you that, my brother. So we're still in the early 60s here, right? 60 to 63, say. And then I think yeah, he joined yeah. another band after. Mm. But this thousand teardrops is wicked. That thousand teardrops. Like Christmas song too, man.
this time for everything. Yeah, man, for real, for real, for real. I'm back. There okay. we go, Mr. Gardner. Yeah. One second. Mm -hmm. As we said, we see and hear you perfect. We yes. see and hear you perfect. Yes, perfect. Okay. So I just said to Nash, we're still in like the early 60s, right? Um, yes, this was 1961, 62. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as I said, things started getting tough because like four singers in those days we wouldn't get more than 15 pounds right mm. for a show and it have to be divided between four of us mm. you know what i mean so time went by and we decided well boy we're going to fold the group because Everybody wanted to do something differently, right? So the group was folded, and I got a job with a band called Kiss Chin and the Souvenirs. So with Kiss there, I I would start learning to hold the bass and play a little one, one six, six two five and some little one notes you know on the bass but knowing the 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 piano you can learn other instruments because you know they are the piano is the, the, the roots hmm. the, the foundation instrument you know you hear that people wicked yeah man so i started <clears throat> touching up the bass and uh, learning the notes and that sort of thing. And I was singing a few songs. Question had people like Dobby Dobson. I don't know if you know the name. Yeah. Dobby Dobson. Good singer. He passed away a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, Morris Winter. And so I I did some singing and I wasn't really playing an instrument yet, but I decided to make a guitar. Kez, the band leader's brother-in-law, was a carpenter, and he had a book with how to cut out musical instrument like a bass and a guitar. And I asked him to cut out one for me. And he made a body and the fretboard and so i took it and bought the parts for the guitar even making the frets in the fretboard and all them thing and build the guitar put in the the pickups and them thing <laughs> wicked wicked and when when i plug in that thing it, it started playing <laughs> <and> so... <laughs> yeah and i started learning my chords you know, in those days, we used to play a lot of Calypso. Yeah. Right? Um, Kiss was a, 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 also a Calypsonian singer. Maria, darling, I must go. Ta, ta, ta. But remember that I love you so. You know, you know that too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maria, yes. That was his favorite song in those days. And... I, it went on, I started playing chords and everything with the guitar and I could play my little trying to you know the real calypso rhythms and that sort of thing because the reggae wasn't born yet, you know. Right. So kids did a, a, a nice thing for me, you know. I I started knowing about music playing guitar and touching up the bass and that sort of thing but i still 
wanted to be a singer. Anyway, they started losing popularity after a couple of years. And so Freddie Campbell, who was a, the drummer for Kiz, went over to Carlos and to, told Carlos, I'm to hire Boris Gardner, you know. <laughs> Just like that. You have to hire that guy, you know, Carlos, because he was very talented and can do a whole heap of things. You know? Freddie was that sort of person, you know. <laughs> Talk as if, well, boy, whatever I'm saying, yeah, for folly. Yeah. <laughs> really and truly, Carlos f took his advice and hired me. So I left Kestrin and I went over to Carlos. Carlos had so many singers there and all that. I sang one and two little tunes and played percussion. I have a little front line cha 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 and them sort of thing up front. And I sing three or four songs. I started learning to play percussion instruments. And now and then I would take the guitar from the guitarist and play a little one tune, you know. I could play some chords. Well, time went on and the bass player in Carlos decided to migrate. Audley or, 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 or Williams. He was a fantastic um, musician. Played vibraphones, steel guitar, piano, bass. Fantastic fellow, man. He left and went to Canada. And so Carlos was looking for a bass player. And could not find a bass player all over the island. So I don't know. One day he called me and say, Why, Boris? I'm looking for a bass man and can't find one, you know. So guess what? You're going to play bass, you know. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> I said, my palpitation start immediately. <laughs> Well, I Carlos, I'm not feeling well. well. <laughs> me play bass in this band. Every musician can read music in the band, you know. And to have a, a man like me, you know, who don't really read music at the time. He said, don't worry yourself, man. He, he was a, a trombonist and a bass player and pianist, you know. Carlos. Mm -hmm. So he said, well... You will learn one song at a time. Right? You just carry on the bass. You have records that will play. You just play them and listen to the bass part and play along get a, until you can play it properly, you know? That, at that time, no um, scare music was just coming in. You know? Um, so... I took home the bass and I started listening to Eastern Standard Time. You must know that right scale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I learned the part and went on the bandstand and Carlos gave me the bass that when I'm going to play that and I played it right through it. You know, feel nice, man. I buy a book and started teaching myself how to read. How to read. So well I kept doing that every day, putting in some work. And I even took a break in even the singing. I'd, I'd learned to sing at a one tune and play and sing, you know, that sort of thing. But I, I was more interested in playing bass. And as time, so after a year, going on a year and a half, I, I was even playing some jazz and that sort of thing. 
Carlos, the, the 70s was getting rough politically, you know. Mm -hmm. And so he decided to go to the, the Bahamas to, to do a, um, a set of nightclubs that had named um, Cat and Fiddle, right? So we do six months in, in Freeport and six months in Nassau at the Cat and Fiddle Clubs in both um, islands. And so we'll spend one whole, um, one whole year in the, in, in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. On the hotel circuit? Yeah. On the, well, it was a nightclub really called okay. Cat and Fiddle. But um, the tourists would come in for the shows, you know, from the hotels. Mm -hmm. And we play at that nightclub. The, yeah, big stars come in, you know. I, I, I back even Brooke Benton and Bass at that time now. And, and, and Roy Hamilton. You remember Roy Hamilton? The name sounds familiar, but... When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. One of them boys from, from Brookbent and Days, man. Yeah. Great singer. Unchained Melody. Mm. You remember that song? That song, definitely. Oh, my love. Right. He did it originally. Okay. Yeah, man. Well, Why not? A whole heap of history tonight from Duff's for Duff's. We get in school. <laughs> school. We get in school. <laughs> school in session. <laughs> yeah, man. Went on, and I really put in some good work in that year because there was nothing very much to do when we weren't working, you know. Mm. In the daytime, we, we just rehearse our practice and we work like I think about six nights a week. Yeah, so time went by and Carlos got a job to go to New York to do Jamaican independent celebrations. Right? So, um, a little before that, I came back to Jamaica in 67. I was having a problem with my tonsils. And I said, boy, you know, I, I, it looked like I go off to take out my tongue, so it was affecting my, my vocal my singing. So I came back to Jamaica. We took a break. Came back to Jamaica and I went and I did the operation, taking out my tonsils inside a doctor's office, not a hospital. I was wide awake, <laughs> right? So, hello? Do we hear you and see you? We hear you oh. proper. It's a quiet one if we're still on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it'll be a school in session. We can just sit here and listen and learn. <laughs> yes. So I sat in a chair and the doctor took a, a, a injection needle, yeah. opened my mouth as wide as possible, and he injected the two tonsils about three times each. I said, Whoa. Oh, I'll never forget that feeling. It's supposed to kill the tonsils, you understand? Yeah. Deaden the tonsils. With that, got that done and pushed back my chair and he started cutting. <laughs> Get down in my throat. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you. 
I just had to be a water that way. I still felt the pain. No? That, <laughs> well, uh, I wanted two more injections to kill that pain. <laughs> right? So, he took out one and then he started on the other one. And the blood now kept going down to my throat. And his face was right over me. <laughs> and I, I made one cough. <laughs> And when you look over his face, <laughs> there are drops of blood <laughs> on his glasses. I, <laughs> I tried oh to say, I tried to say, sorry, doc. <laughs> but but when, I, when I said, there was no sound. Oh. Is you numb now? <laughs> I, I lost all my voice. I was dumb. Mm. I could not say, ah, I never knew it was like that, right? Anyway, he took the out and thing and fixed me up and sent me home. And for o over two weeks, I could not say a word. I was dumb, right? And I mm. thought I wouldn't get back my voice. <laughs> Yeah. And while I was there in bed recuperating, guess who walked into the house? Lorna from Trinidad. No! <laughs> <laughs> she came back to Jamaica, you know, <laughs> was spending time. She was riding on a bike. Okay. <laughs> sort of thing, you know. So wow. But the whole time she came and looked looked for the family, you know. I could not say a word to her. <laughs> the second time. <laughs> you know, I, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh. Well, I tell you. I could not say one word. I just look. I got a hug and all that, you know. And so she left and I didn't see her after that. I never saw her. And I kind of got back and my voice came back. And so after a month or two, I don't remember how long, Carlos called us back and we went back to um, Nassau. Mm -hmm. We played in the Nassau Beach Hotel for a few months, and then we went to New York to to do independent celebrations in August. And so we did that that thing. That by this time, no, I I was singing and playing my bass. You know, songs like "Only a Smile" and. Again, and I'm sure I could really play now and sing. Mm -hmm. right. So, after that um, celebrations gig, Carlos said, well, he would, he would like to stay in New York. And, and the band would play like on weekends. And we could go and work during the week. So some rough, um, <laughs> some rough living that would be, you know, for me mm -hmm. as a heart yeah. condition yeah. man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yep. Some of the guys decided they'd do it. Mm -hmm. But a couple of them said, well, boy, them, them can't live in New York, including myself. And they returned to Jamaica. I went to Canada. And I, I did a stint there at, at Club Jamaica with Leslie Butler and thing for a couple of months. And then winter came on and Leslie, who was a keyboard player and all that, said, well, he, he had to come back to Jamaica because he works on the North Coast mm -hmm. in winter time. Well, I said, I ain't staying in Canada, you know, because the first 
look I look and I see some flakes coming down. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not for me. Yeah. No, no, sir. <laughs> so I returned to Jamaica. Started looking around for a job. I found Byron Lee, but I'm a, a new bass player. I found the Vikings, but I don't really need a man right now. So I said, right, I don't know what I'm going to do. Suddenly, I got a call. My dog is making a lot of noise out there. No problem. You all give me a second. Okay. <laughs> give me a second. <laughs> Boy, now some history tonight on Dubs Pond Dubs. Ross Clat, you know. Lona Payne story again. <laughs> oh, boy. Jesus, please. I want to imagine that the first time you know, say nothing, you just look at the girl and, and smile and them thing, and then she come back again and you cannot say a word. Ross Clat. <laughs> She must be saying, what happened to this man? <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. Don't get quiet. Boy. <laughs> Let me get disciplined. So there we go. Welcome back, Mr. Gardner. Yes, I'm back. Right. Perfect. Uh, where were we? <laughs> you reached by f the looking for a bass player at Federal. Oh, and, uh... right. Right. So just being at home and all that now, contemplating what I'm going to do, I got a call from a man who had a, um, it's, it's a steakhouse, mm -hmm. and he wanted a, a, a trio to play some music in the night, you know? So he called me and said, well, if I'm interested, in, and if I could put a, a trio together, or even a quartet, and, and come and play some music. I said, well, I'll, I'll, do, I'll try. I'll do my best. So I ran around and I found a couple of guys that perform on the North Coast. Um, they play, you know, concert music and that sort of thing. So three of us got together and we started playing some old-time Jazz and you know not 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 cool kind of music, mm -hmm. and I started singing some um, what's his Frank Sinatra mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing. So nice music on on hit parade and all that. Yeah, and we started going on nicely, and. As time went by, the two musicians decided to to go down on the north coast for the winter. Mm -hmm. And so I found two more guys, Keith Sterling and Tony Bennett. Mm -hmm. the younger guys now, you know, because mm -hmm. those guys were big men in that those days. So Tony Bennett and Keith Sterling came in and we started doing some nice pop pop music now from off the, the, the charts. And we, we started pulling in some nice crowd inside the little club. Every night, Bronco ramen. <laughs> so it, it was wonderful. And I added a guitar. And then I added a conga drummer, Larry MacDonald. McDonald's One brother. of our best Congo drummers, man. Mm. And so 
we really started doing our thing now the right way. Everything was nice. And then one night, the manager for a, a hotel um, I, all, I, I keep forgetting the name of it, Courtly. <laughs> Courtly Manor Hotel. Came to the club and with a group and heard us and said, boy, this group are really sound good. We want to talk to Boris. Send somebody to call me. Went over to him. Said, boy, right now, you know, I want your Courtly Manor, you know. Just name your price. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> so really? <laughs> <laughs> so I spoke to the guys in the band, you know, and I said, boy, we're going to have to make a move, you know, because it's progress. Yeah. Right? I said, okay. So I went and I, I spoke to him one of the days after and told him, what we'd like and all that. So anything at that time, you know, you know, they had a big jazz band up there, you know. You know, Ernie Wrangling. Yeah. The guitarist was yeah. number one in the world one time. His yeah. group was playing there, fantastic club, um, jazz band. But they wanted a change from the jazz the more pop music because people okay. was dancing more, yeah. you know, the yeah. stroke and what the, the calypsos was coming in very popular and that sort of thing, you know. And so we took the job and started doing great. And this was the reggae happening band? This was the Boris Gardner happening. Boris Gardner that, yeah, Boris Gardner happening. That was the name oh. of the band. Okay. Before that, it was the Broncos okay. at the other club. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and it's we with were Lloyd Broncos. Parks and Earl 16 and all those guys. Earl 16 came in the, in the happening. Okay. But Earl wasn't with us in the Broncos. Okay, okay, okay. Right. So, we came on now and um, as we went along in, in the in the Courtland Manor as usual everything started going down. <laughs> 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 you know? So with that we decided to go on the road. Well not a road yet, but change hotels and went to the um, Kingston um, Hotel Kingston mm -hmm. another hotel and we started to swing the hotel again everywhere we go with us the people would follow us you know so after a while now the the hotel thing start getting to us and we say well you know I think it's time we go on the road and everybody agrees, well, you know, it's better to, better monies because you can charge for one gig or you can get for a week in a hotel. And we went on the road. With that, I, I, I wrote in 19... Where are, we, where are we now? Uh, coming down to 1967, right. We are okay, 1967, 68. Mm -hmm. When I was at the Bronco, mm -hmm. um, Studio One, Cox and Downbeat contacted me and said, well, I need a bass player in, in the... Um, to the one band. Um, if you're interested, come and talk to me. We were still at the Bronco, yes, huh? Mm -hmm. So I left and 
went down to, I didn't leave the Bronco. Bronco is a night thing. Um, shooter one was in the day. So I went down and I joined with um, Jackie Matu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jackie Matu. And a guitarist named Freighter. Right, Patrick McDonald. Some good musicians. That's with the Crystal Lights? And, uh, huh? With the Crystal Lights at Studio One? In them those? In them no, those? The, no, the Crystal Lights was Derek Harriet. Okay. Derek, that we don't reach there yet. Okay. Well, I started playing some good bass lines now, you know? We played songs like Nanny Goat. Mm -hmm. You know Nanny Goat? Of course. Larry of Marshall. Course. Right. Um, the Hip Tones, Why Did You Leave? Mm -hmm. um, party time. I even did. Uh oh, my my thing is going down. <laughs> we we still here and see you perfect, Mister Gardner. I know my my um battery thing is at fifteen percent. <laughs> <laughs> um, I might have to go for my charger. For the charger. Yeah. But as it went on, um. The yeah, party time was, was a big hit. Um, and these are uh, classic rhythms still used yeah, up to this yeah. day. The nanny goat, the, the, the party right. time. I mean, those are like legendary rhythms we are talking about here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yes. You had um, Master Griffiths. Feel like jumping. Feel, feel like jumping. jumping, right. And another one that followed, I can't remember the name. Was two massive hits for, right? I played a lot of hits for. for I did a, at least two hundred songs for for um, Studio One. And the you time had people two hundred songs, two four times four songs a day. Mm. Yeah, and we we work like four night four days a week. That's sixteen songs. Right, he even did a song for Bob Marley, right? I played for Bob after when I went with um Lee Scratch Perry. Oh. Uh, Scratch Perry always wanted me to play bass for him, so I, I gave him some nice hits. Congos, you know, the Congos, mm -hmm. right? Row Fisherman Row. Row Fisherman yeah. Row. Really, yeah. Right. I played on that album. Um, Police and Thieves. Junior Movement. That was a big hit for him also in England. Mm -hmm. Police and Thieves. Um, war in a Babylon. Yeah. Tribal yeah. War in yeah. a Babylon. Yeah, man. It's legendary a songs we are talking about here, Mr. Gardner. Legendary songs. <laughs> yeah, no, those, those bass lines and me. <laughs> yeah, and I went over to Duke Reed mm -hmm. and I gave him You don't care for me at all. Yeah. Um, Perfidia. You remember Perfidia? The Phyllis Dillon? Phyllis Dillon. Yeah. And I, I even played bass on it and sang, talked on it for her. With a Wait. sad lament, my dreams have faded like a broken melody. While the gods of love look I down know, and I, laugh. I, I, did, I didn't know you did that. <laughs> I didn't know you did that. <laughs> yes, it's me, man. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I played on several hits. And one day, you know, um, Derek Harriet came to me and said, well, I want to have a session. And he would like me to arrange it for him. And so I, I arranged the session. There, it was about four songs. I can't remember the name of the other ones. But the one that stood out, I was born a loser. 
You know that song? Of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was born a loser. Up, up, up. Right. Big hit for him, man. Right. And so I, I played a lot of bass lines for other producers, including all Miss Pottinger. Who did me some injustice? I wrote a song for a pantomime. In fact, I wrote the pantomime, the whole um, music arrangement. And Trevor Roan wrote this, the pantomime. And he wrote the lyrics for, for, for the songs. And I wrote the music. And we, we got a hit tune out of, of that set, a song called I'm Alone, I'm Alone, I'm Alone with Myself Tonight. Judy Moat sang it. Mm -hmm. It was a big hit for Judy. And you know what Miss Pottinger did? She put a fictitious name as a writer with Trevor Roan. Did not put my name. Hmm. She robbed me. I didn't get a penny from the publishing. And that tune was a hit for Judy all over the world. That, that was your first songwriting credit? As... Um, let's see. Let's see. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so it went on. Mm-hmm. I did an album for, for Byron Lee. Well, I did an album before that called It's So Nice to Be With You. Hey, look what you have done Showing me the sun And now it's shining through It's so nice to be with you. You know that song, right? For real, yep. It was a big hit all in Trinidad and Guyana and them places. And that kind of put, put me on the map. And so I then went on and did an album called It's So Nice to Be With You. Then I, that was for Federal Recording Studio. I left Federal and I went over to Dynamic Sounds and I did an album called Reggae Happening because mm. the band was the Boris Gardner Happening. Okay. So I made an album called Reggae Happening and there was a song, I, I did that commanding wife you're playing there, that was on that album, right? And I did another song called Elizabeth Reggae. Yeah, yeah. Which was a big hit. Big, big, big right? Hit. In UK. Hey, yeah. It went up to the top 15 on top of, of the, the the big charts. Yeah. On a yeah, reggae yeah. chart. Mm -hmm. You understand? And that tune sold over 250,000 copies, you know. Mm -hmm. And would you believe, because I never signed a contract with Byron, Byron never gave me a penny the from the story, sales same. of that record. Mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about 1970. 69, 69, 70. 1970 there, yeah. So he take the credit for that. And I believe he bought out Dynamic Zones from his other partners with that money. Oh, because he, Jesus, there were three of them that owned it. Yeah. And then suddenly it was one, Byron, mm -hmm. after that hit. In fact, when that hit was released, it was released under Byron Lee and the Dragoneers. Dragoneers. Mm -hmm. Right, it was released in England. Billboard had it when I really saw the billboard, I said, but wait, I don't understand this. And God asked Byron, what is this? And said, I don't understand this at all. I don't know about it. 
<laughs> right, because him and the Bruce White and, and Creole was very friendly and he wanted mm -hmm. to break into that market. You understand? So he just did this, they did them, them thing. After now, I start kind of a, make it known through the glean and paper, that all them saw that. You see, change over to Boris Gardner in England. Yes, and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But when all the money's dropped, Byron Lee, no, give me no money. Jeez. Right? And because we, I was a fool in them days, <laughs> not knowing what to do. You, you, you got to a, a lawyer you have to pay money. I no money them days to pay no lawyer. Right? And all the lawyers were friendly. <laughs> the other lawyers who owned Dynamic Sounds were Patroso and I think Ralph Zadie. Right? After a while, they weren't in it anymore. So apparently, they were bought out. Anyway, I bite my lip and thing and carry on. I did a, a couple albums with the company still because they were still the best to, to deal with mm -hmm. at the time. I did an album called Soulful Experience, mm -hmm. which was, which that album kind of put me on the map in Guyana and then places. They, they love me because of that album. I toured Guyana first thing. Because of that album. I have been a rover. I have walked alone. Remember that song? Yep. Hiked a hundred highways. Never found a home. Still in all I'm happy. The reason is you see. Once in a while. Along the way, love's been good to me. By the time I get to Phoenix, all them tune, it's I want some great songs on it. Also, some originals that I made, you know. And we started touring. The, the happening went to... Okay, and we went to Trinidad, we went to um, the Caymans, Belize, we went to Florida, you know, we were doing fine. Um, 1970, or oh, 74, at the night who was the owner of Bronco, called me and said, they're making a movie. Give me five minutes, right? Okay. I have to... Get the get charger. The... <laughs> yeah, I forget it. I hope it make it back before the whole phone just shut down. <laughs> well, I shall tell you, School and lesson tonight. But, yeah, man. And the man oh, remember every single thing. Huh? The Some man is falling dead. He on top of his game. For real, for real. And the man can sing. You hear that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like every song you mention, him sing it. Mm -hmm. and some real treats we're in for you tonight on Dops for Dops. For real. For real. I guess it's in these days now is when he started to touch the big hits. Yeah, I'm really, really looking forward for this now. Really looking forward for this now. Quick is the word.
Perfect. Good to go again. Perfect. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yes. Hello? Yeah, we hear you, Mr. Gardner. Oh, okay. we hear you. Right, okay. Um, so we reached the Calvin Lockhart and the movie. Calvin Lockhart. Oh, the singer kind of got get high. Oh, oh. But on all ends, everything is good. The video is still there. The audio is still there. All right. Um, yes, I was called by Eddie Knight. And he said um, they were working on an album. They were working on a movie. A movie. And they'd like to know if I was interested in writing some music for it. So I said, well, I can only say I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> so they told me what the movie, you know, there was a movie star named Calvin Lockhart. Mm -hmm. And if you know, if you want to know who he was, go, go and look up Cotton Comes to Harlem. So the nice movie to you'll enjoy. It. Okay. Well, he came to Jamaica now and he had this idea of making this movie. And he spoke to me and said, Well, the movie is really called Every Nigger is a Star. Right? And if I can write some mu music for it and, you know, background music and a, a featured song it would be great so I said well I'll, I'll do my best I'll see what I can do so I took my brother and I buy him a cue <laughs> love the white rum you know <laughs> <laughs> I bought him a cue and was sat down in my like a bedroom thing and and start to I'm not sure anymore oh, just how anymore. it happened before. The places I knew were sunny and blue. And the guy come up with some wicked lyrics. <laughs> right? I have a record if you want me to play it. For real? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah man. Okay. <laughs> this is the original. People, you see that? History tonight on Dubs Pond Dubs. I've been on my own to 
be hated and despised. No one to sympathize. But there's one great thing I know. You can say I told you so. We got a bright place in the sun where there's love for everyone. And every nigga is a star. Every nigga is a star. Who will find that you will die at every nigga is a star? What do you think of that? Big tune, big tune, big, big, big legendary tune. Do, 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 do. We've got a bright place in the sun where there's love for everyone, and every nigga is a star. Every nigga is a star. Who will deny that you and I, and every nigga is a star? Every nigga is a star. 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 Why not? We get Mr. Gaza in concert tonight. In concert tonight in a free concert. <laughs> yes, that song. Wicked. A lot of guys do over that song. Yep, yep, yep. In including Big Youth. Big Youth. Supercat yeah. sample it as well, right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. And I never, I never make no money off of that. The only time I make money is when it came into the movie. Mm. Scene. Um, Moonlight, okay, and Moonlight won Oscar. <laughs> you <Okay>. understand? <laughs> that was when I really made a money off it. Oh, so you never gave permission for nobody to remix or sample that? The others, no, yeah. no, in those days, we're not really, you know. We never really even knew about publishing and them sort of thing and what to do. But the guys on top were kind of holding us down and tricking us, you know. Mm -hmm. When they must put all your name as writer, the, you see a fictitious name. Mm -hmm. That's what Miss Pottinger did with me. She, did, yeah. she put a fictitious name plus Trevor Roan because she and Trevor Roan was close. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So she would give him part of the publishing and the other part she keep for herself. Mm -hmm. yes. But you know, what is in the dark always come to light. And For real. Very, true, mean, very true. Very true. Some good things happen to me in my old age. Mm. You know? Even um, you can say um, Kendrick Lamar. Mm -hmm. yeah. He heard that song and he said, boy, and would like to sample a part of it and start his album. And he contacted me. He wanted every nigger is a star. Pa -da -pa <laughs> do -ga -do -ga. Every nigger. And that keep playing about six times in the beginning of the album. What? Right? Yeah. Just every nigger is a star. Every nigger. Who will deny that mm -hmm. you and I? And every nigger is a star. Hit me now and I'm going them thing. But that is what start the album. Well, you and see, that album is a multi-million seller. Yeah. It can't stop sell. <laughs> Good things come to those who eat. Right. And I get my little percentage. <laughs> you know? So That's now we come into you. the... Uh, we, we talk about all this, but we now come into the big hit as well. Yes. And uh, when we say weird. big hit, we Monster. mean <laughs> monster massive, hit. Mass massive, yeah. 
Mr. Gardner, you well, said that totally correct when we did the first sound check. The song we're talking about now can never die. Can never ever die. That's what I say too. Exactly. It will never die. You know why? There's always somebody wanting to wake up with somebody. Exactly. And they do him no how to say it. They can mm. play just, that song for just, you. just play the song. <laughs> yeah. Even on, on WhatsApp, you see all that guy come on and you hear the intro play and him just start singing to him girl. It's my voice hearing, you know. You know. <laughs> It's a massive song. I want to win. God. Right? Many times. Yeah. For real. Massive, massive, massive hit I mean, song. Mark, you know, I didn't write that song. It was written by Ben Peters, an American songwriter. He, he passed away in 2011. Mm. But he wrote for quite a, a number of stars, superstars, you know? Yeah. Right, so um, the, the movie, Every Nigger's a Star, came out. It had quite a few songs on it, you know, some nice music and singers. And the, the story was weak. It was like a documentary. Big you'd come from the States and hey, and I'm, oh, I meet a friend of mine thing, and I'm go here and I'm go up into the hills with Count Ozzy and the Rasta drummers and them thing and I'm smoke up some herb and play some music and I'm say good night and the next thing he find himself in another area of Jamaica and same thing with some guys singing some music. Yeah, right through. And at the end of that, him take a plane and leave and go back to the States. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you. A tourism <laughs> movie. <laughs> Show please a Jamaican one. Carib was ramp-packed. Carib theater. Jam-packed. Uh, even the walkway full of people. You couldn't walk. On the opening night. And the second night, you never have 10 people in the street. Place the street. empty to us. <laughs> Never have 10 people inside the, 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 the theater. So with all that, um, the, the producer, him just gave it up. Mm. They, they've made about a dozen, a, a hundred albums and a hundred forty-five of Every Nigger's a Star. And all the, the um, selectors bought them out. Right? Mm -hmm. And through the years, we're talking from 74, 75, you know, to 85, 95, 105, 30 to 40 years, that thing going between selectors buying from each other. I'm going to buy on the album for a thousand US. Mm -hmm. And that's all, yeah. And the single, a man who pay all a five hundred dollar for the single. All them kind of thing with madness was going on. I guess why you know I get a penny off of that. <laughs> 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 you know that. Same old story. I'm not getting a penny. <laughs> anyway, it it went down until a, a, a guy in England called Jazzman Records. He, he only released old, old stuff. Same contact me and said, boy, I wouldn't mind releasing this. I tell him, well, I would have to try to find um, Knight was really in charge eh, of everything. But all I try to find Knight, I can't find him. All over the place. Until eventually I well went. It's on the internet anyway. And I, I found his name. And he was deceased. He had passed away. Mm. Right? So I said, boy, that means that this tune are dead then. Because my music. So I just gave the guy the okay. 
and we'll find a couple copies of the, the records and clean them up on the computer mm -hmm. and rebuild the, the jacket. Mm -hmm. Boy, when you look at that, you couldn't believe that it could look so after all these years. It looked perfect and had the music clean. Wicked. <laughs> so, boy. Right? And so we just set it out on the internet. And it started selling around. That's how those guys know, like Kendrick Lamar, heard it from the album, you know? And he contacted me that he wanted a sample apart for his album. And then the Moonlight producers said, boy, I'm going to like use it in the movie. Mm. Right? So that was my good part of that. Where I finally got something from my mm. work. Justice. Yeah. For real. Right. So coming through the years now, and we reached into it's something, something is funny here, you know. This everything is good on our ends, Mr. Gardner. Everything is perfect I'm, on our I, ends. I'm only seeing two percent. I don't understand that. <laughs> no, it should be more than that. Is that meant to you? Is he been pushed in properly? What was that? Yeah, we seen you on here and you. Sorry, I don't have on the headphone. Yeah, you hear me? Yes, Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, came through the years. In the 70s, things wasn't so good musically. I went into studios and started doing some engineering. Um, studio engineering thing. And then I made an album called Sledgehammer for um, Aquarius Studios, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I reformed the band and we went back into hotels, Intercontinental, Rosal in Mumbai. And we did about four years there. We left there and we went to um, Houston and we started playing at a club over there. Houston was a a nice little club. I would spend a few, a few, three or four months. We returned to Jamaica. And then I wasn't really interested in, in the band work anymore. It was getting tedious for me. So Willie Lindo, who is a guitarist and producer. I mean, he used to work with my with the happening also once, you know. Mm. He was a few years younger than me. So he looked at me and said, Forrest, I could do some music, no man. People them long for hear from you. 
<laughs> um, you know, and anything we do, we can just split 50 50 between us, right? So I say, well, I, I couldn't ask a better deal still. <laughs> 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 Right, so we decided it's all right. I wasn't doing anything anyway. We recorded three songs Guilty, Let's Keep It That Way, and I Want to Wake Up With You. Which one you want here now? <laughs> all of them, all of them. <laughs> Well, of you course, know, we have to know, go with the monster tune. You know what shows I could do in this time I've been with you. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> let me <us> see. <clears throat> Not that one. Come on, man. what is wrong with you? Well, if it doesn't work, I think I even can sing it line by line, word for word. <laughs> <sighs> wow. Where are those songs now? Um... <laughs> I've been accused, convicted, and condemned. <clears throat> The trial's over, and now I face the end. Is this your way of telling me we're through? When all I'm guilty of is loving you. You were the judge, the jury, all in one. You found me guilty, and now my term's begun. Don't punish me for things I didn't do when all I'm guilty of is loving you loving you and now I'm losing you Losing you for things I didn't do. Please let your heart consider an appeal. For now you know exactly how I feel. Don't punish me for things I didn't do when all I'm guilty of is loving you. Up, up, up.
You know, you know what's the strange thing, Mr. Gardner? I heard that song. <laughs> I all I let tell you what's the strange thing. First time I heard that song, I heard it from Ken Parker, and I always thought it was Ken Parker. I never knew you sang it first. You, you didn't know that it was me? No, no, because I heard a Ken Parker version. I always thought Ken Parker did it first. Oh, I did that in 1980. Um, I, love that song too. I didn't know that. Didn't know that. Yeah. And then we did the follow up to that with that, this song here. Let's. Where is it? Oh. There's no need to lie without me half trying I could love you It shows in your eyes that you feel the same way I do But wherever I go my conscience goes what more can I say? It's only desire, not get a fire. Let's keep it that way. Cause I don't wanna have to tell her a lie when I get back home. It would tear apart her fairy tale world if I did her wrong. Oh, yeah. Lying to her would hurt me more than leaving you this way. So before we forget, we're not cheaters yet. Let's keep it that way. Wow, 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 wow. Mr. Gardner? Mr. Gardner? Well, I just... Well, I just hope the battery doesn't die on us. Jesus, peace. I'm talking about the big song now. <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> we can't get Grass, glad, you know. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Wait, let me just link him on separate and tell him. But I think if the battery would have that. died, he would have been taken off completely, like from the screen. Why not? I need to get some more Boris Gardner dubs after the show. The man sounds well, sweet. I have to get it guilty. <laughs> Bomba clad. The man gone. <laughs> the battery. One second. Looking like the battery probably died. 
because the message is not even going through on a WhatsApp. Well, it would be what? really, really bad. It would be really, really bad. That would be pity, actually. Because you hear the man sing, you hear the voice. Rask, like you all hear the history. Yeah. Why, Mr. Gardner, put in back the charger. <laughs> Nah, man, I can't believe we reached any big hit on this one. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, like the phone there, I know it's it, it just not going. It gone? One tick. One tick. I'm going to call and see. It gone. Yeah, probably charging now with can I don't know. Strange. We'll give it like a two more minute time mm. to see if the man can can rejoin. If not, we need to do our part few. Yeah, that will happen. We'll have to have our part few to do the ending. For real, for real. <laughs> That you see the man brain sharp like, mm. like, like this age, uh, uh, this year. Yeah, man. Wicked. Wicked. And always in life, when you think you know a thing or, uh, you know a thing or two, you always learn a thing or two. That is very good. Very, very good. And these are the kind of people you want teaching you. Exactly. Exactly. Not exactly. Not no hearsay. Exactly. Well, I mean, we're talking about like, like, like Lee Scratch Perry days, Studio One days, like nothing. And these are like cornerstones of Jamaican popular music. Oh, no, man, it went back. Looking like anything positive on your end? Anything popping up on the? No, no, no. I don't see him coming back here yet. But boy, Nash, what a wicked show so far! The oh, amount no. of teachings I'm telling you, I have to rewatch the thing quick, 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 quick to catch up with the history. Wicked. Oh no, time to make an executive decision, you know. It doesn't go through. We don't hear from him. So what do you say? Part few next time? Part few is a must. Part few is a must. Like really and truly like, <laughs> like we are split second away from, as we said, a monster hit. Like, like a tune that is played up to this day on popular radio stations all over Europe. Mm -hmm. It is like a massive, massive hit, and as Mr. Gardner said in the in the in the sound check we did earlier this week, um, this is a song that can never die. Yeah. This is you a song. Earlier return. this week, you heard it's on the radio in Germany, right? Yeah, man, for real. <laughs> yeah, man, for real. All right. So, um, yeah, man, we need to do a part few with Mr. Gardner. Correct. Where we continue where we where we continue exactly where we left right now. Um, well, so far, I can say on behalf of the whole Dubs Pond Dubs team um, that it was a wicked show. That it was a really, really interesting show. Like people, you learn something here. That is like the history. So um, big up, Mr. Gardner, one more time. Really, really, really pleasure. You hear the man sing like every song him sing. He put out his guitar and. Almost every song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so people, um, we think for the moment, I hate that. 
episode 14, at least for the moment, is done. Um, we appreciate you for tuning in, watching tonight's episode. Yeah. Um, we're trying to, to get in contact with Mr. Gardner ASAP to continue where we left here. And um, subscribe to our Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Instagram uh, channels to get updated on our next guest, on the next show, on the next episode. And, but it uh, will be sorted out. We will have the ending. So not it's needed. Course. It's needed. It's needed. Like, like, like we're getting to the nitty gritty now. Mm -hmm. So, um, Mr. Gardner, you're not here, but thank you so far for a really, really, really interesting show, for taking your time and um, speaking with us about all these things. It's, um, it's a real pleasure. And as I said, I'm, I'm, it's like a little schoolboy. <laughs> Just sit and learn and listen what the big man are say. For real. So, Mr. Gardner. Once again, manas and respect, and uh, part few is a must. Yeah. So, Nash, um, we get in contact with Mr. Gardner. We will. Um, subscribe to our channels, and uh, yeah, man, next time here on Dubs Fun Dubs. <laughs>